So I'm, I'm going to finish. I promise you I will finish before 8. If I finish before 8, you guys buy me beer? If I finish after 8, I'll buy everybody beer. Huh? Go ahead, try it. So I'll start with this guy. This boom. <laughs> The top, the our our uh, course mascot. <laughs> so the title of my talk is above the mascot, and it's related to a series of studies that came out um, with the finding CPG sites that us are associated with age. So, so, so the problem I'm talking about is more general than this, but this is what I'm going to use to, as an example to show what the problem is. So it's, and it's really, I decided to give this talk because it's very much related to the morning talk. It's an application of what we did this morning. All right, so, so here's how, how, what happened. You had all these consortia and big groups and big uh, studies that had a bunch of blood from their GWA study and perhaps nothing very exciting from the GWAS, so now that we're going to move on to EWAS, which is epigenetic associ wide association study. So you take the same blood, you put it on a 450K array, and then you go at it. So the, a, lot of, a lot of these groups, they found, they didn't necessarily find anything related to their disease, but they did find real association with age. So you had all these, diff all these consortia were publishing on age instead of their disease. And basically what you do is very simple. You take, you have this 450 CPGs, right? Well, like, as we described, it's not there anymore. This, this morning you get methylation measurements for each CPG, 450,000, and then they have th hundreds of samples, dozens to hundreds of samples they have age. So then you do a linear regression for each CPG site, and out comes a, a beta and a p-value. So all these papers are just saying, they're telling stories about the CPGs that they found that are, that are changing, that their methylation is changing through age. And what I'm going to show you is an alternative story to the story that methylation is changing. And it has to do somewhat with batch effects. All right, so blood is not a, it's not a tissue, right? It's a bunch of, or maybe some people might call it a tissue, but it's a, it's a, a, a bunch of different cells, including natural killer cells, CD8 cells, CD4 cells, granulocytes, B cells, monocytes. So you have, so when you get a, when, when you have whole blood, and you measure DNA methylation for whole blood, it's the, it's the average of all these cells and their different cells. Some are this, some are that, some are that. So this picture here on the right, my right, stage right, uh, is, comes from a public data set that's really fantastic where they actually took, instead of taking whole blood, they, they sorted into six different, I think they might have done more than six, but at least six different cell types, and then they put those on the 450K array. So what I'm showing in this picture, I've, select, I've selected 60, no, five, how many were there? Maybe 500 or so? Yeah, 600, I think. 600 CPGs that were clearly changing between one cell type and the rest. So you see at the top, you see that those first like 50 to 100, they're all red except for granulocytes. See that? And they have replicates. They have biological replicates. It's very consistent. Every single granulocyte is blue, unmethylated, and everybody else is methylated. And now let's take another one. Let's take um, this group here. Uh, anyway, you can pick anyone, but see this block here? Those are unmethylated for everything except B cells where it's methylated, right? so, et cetera. So you can, see that you can see that pattern all over the place. 
Okay, now, here are, I'm going to skip to the C one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take these CPGs. It's about, uh, it's about 60, maybe. I'm just going to pick these as an example so that you can see it. And, I, and I, what, I do, what I'm doing now is I'm taking one of these published studies that cl claim that methylation changes from as with, with age. All right, so here I have the da their data. And you can see, oh, yeah, it's true. It's, it certainly seems that that's the case. So here are some very young individuals. They're two, this is the age down here. The numbers range from 2 to 10. And here are so not so young individuals. I used to say old, but I know that some people in the room might be offended because they're 60 and old. Um, so there's the not so young and the young, and clearly they have different methylation patterns. Very clear, right? There's the, the, the not so young are unmethylated in all these CPGs, and the very young are very methylated in those things. Okay, now here's the problem. Look at, now let's go, so that's, that's the whole blood data over here. Now let's move over to the left, and let's look at that, those same exact CPGs for just these granulocytes and CD4s. Do you guys see the pattern? They have different blood composition. That's going to be the eventual explanation. It's the same exact pattern. So it's ba basically what it seems to be happening is that um, these individuals ha are more like this. They have more granulocytes than these guys. That's what that we can actually ma do the math and do it. So if you think about this just a little bit, you're going to realize that it's very much kind of like it, it is very much a batch effect as we defined it mathematically this morning. It's, it's weird to call it a batch effect, right? Because this is nature now. It's, you know, as we get older, our blood composition changes. That's real. That's not a technician changing. That's real. But it behaves as a batch effect because the young, they, their measurement error, if you want to call it that, it's, although, again, it's not a great name, but if, you, if, if your model says beta, if your model says age is an effect and the rest is independent, then there's going to be groups of samples that behave like each other, and they are basically being driven by these cell compositions. OK, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, so what you can do then is you can take these profiles. Now you can do math. And this is from a paper. I'm not an author on this paper. It's a very nice paper that I highly recommend taking a look at. And they, what they did is they, take, they took data like this, and they used it to create profiles. And once you have those profiles, it's almost like having those, those columns that we defined this morning, and that define batches. And you can reverse engineer, if you want to call it that, the cell composition of each sample. So for example, here I have a, 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 an example of just two people, young. One, one young person, two, one person who's 64. OK, so th this, uh, this little strip here is, the, um, is their profile. You see that you know, there's blue and there's some red. And then this not so young person is most, mostly blue and then red. So once I, once I, once I reverse engineer the, the, thing, the whole problem, I can get this by adding up each one of these profiles. So here's the end natural killer profile times cough times a times a constant cd8 plus times a constant so i'm i'm multiplying each one of these vectors by a constant and i get that so i'm basically i'm i'm figuring out what the composition how much of each cell type i have and you can see they're very different so see the the, the big difference comes from granulocytes this is 77% granulocytes and these are 27% granulocytes. So, and you can kind of see that over here, right? The, 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 the not so young people look a lot like granulocytes, and these guys don't. Yeah? How do you, how do you treat replicates? How do you deal with replicates? When, when doing what? What, what do you do with replicates? You have like five NK pairs. Here, oh, I just make one profile. I average yeah, them. Not, no. Average. Okay. Median, no, I did average. I, I, don't, I think it matters. Yeah, so I define one profile for each one. And I only do it for this, I only do it on this particular subset. 
So th in a way, this is, these are like the control genes. And from these control genes, I'm, I'm, I'm applying, I'm doing factor analysis and getting and, and kind of describing the batches. So that's the alternative de definition. All right, so now what, what can we do with this? So one of the things we can do, just, just some, some fun things we can do, is we can show that the first principal component of the methylation data is, all, is very much correlated with the first principal component of the estimated cell composition data. That's here, and we have all these studies, and you can see the high correlation. For almost all, this, almost all the studies are there. There's like one kind of a different looking study here. I think that, might, that, might, that one might have like a, another kind of batch effect that took over the first PC. Another nice thing we did at just using all these, so we, we took all these experiments and put them all together, and we just plot age versus the percentage, the estimated percentage of each of the cell types. And you can see the CD4 counts kind of going down, CD8 is going down, NK is going up, B cells going down. And if you look at, and we fit a low S, and if you look at that, you, there, one of the interesting things that comes out is that unfortunately for me and others of my age is that everything starts going downhill <laughs> at 40. Do you see that? It's like, oh, great. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in all of them, right? It's like, you know, like, here it goes, starts going up. And things change at 40. Now, one thing I should mention is this, this in itself could be a batch effect because do you see the colors? The different studies have different, had different ranges of age, unfortunately. So, you know, you know they, had, they had one study with all the newborns, another study with the teenagers, another study, you see what I'm saying? Like, so, it could, it, could, it could be that this is a batch effect. But, but when we looked at, when you looked at just one study, it did seem like it wasn't. Like, over here, if you just look at the purple that has 20 to 100, even in the purple, you see that shape, even if you stick to just one study. All right, so the... the um, the, the, another thing we did, so the, so the referees were very eager to, for us to, to show, either to show or, to, or, to, not, or, to, or to, to tell us that we were wrong, um, that there was a change, that if you estimated the effects taking a 10 cow cell composition, that it, things changed. So I think the referees that were authors on those other papers wanted us to show that it wasn't a big deal, and the other referees wanted us to show it was. Um, and it was, it's really hard to do, I guess, is the final message. So one thing is to estimate the cell composition of each sample. Another thing is to, is to try to fit a model that can extract the cell-specific um, profiles and how they change with age. I'm going to show you a little math on that later. It's really hard to do. So one of the, one of the things we did is we, we applied an, a published approach, which I think doesn't, there's no mathematical backing for it, which does a regression, including the cell composition estimates as covariates, and a claiming that that somehow adjusted. I don't, I don't see the math that justifies that. When you do that, there's, this, is, this is the naively adjusted, and here are the original. And, you can see, and there's really not that much of a change. Now, when you do SVA, we, did S we actually did RUV, which is like SVA. Uh, we do get a big attenuation. You see, this is, the, this is the original line. And you can see a lot of points kind of going up towards zero, either, you know, either high numbers that come down or low numbers that come up. But I guess for me, the most convincing thing we did is we, took, we, we got our hands on a study where they had single cell, they had, um, you say um, they had um, s the cell purified cell types and age, and when we did that, we we saw that the, the like for CD4s and, and monocytes, there was no there was very little age effect. So, so, so did you do independent study that independent study that had age and it was just on one cell type. And it, oh, so you don't know the actual study of the Well. We, we, were, we assumed they were 100% they were CD4, but we don't know if that's true. We assume that. So now you can see the big attenuation. So 
So these numbers are very wide. They go, the T statistics go from minus 15 to 15. But when you just look at CD4s, there's no, there's very little, it just looks like noise. Maybe the, there is a little bit of a correlation, but not much. So, you, you know, it's like, it's like this, this adjustment, I think, is not, not really adjusting anything. The SVA-like adjustments maybe are working, but it's not, we're not completely sure, because maybe we had to include more PCs, or maybe we included too many PCs. It's a, the, the reason it's so hard is because this, this problem is, is a lot like the, the ethnic group and, and time problem. The, the age and cell composition are so correlated that it's very hard to, to separate it out. That's why I think it's hard. So that's why if you go to an independent study that doesn't have cell composition, then you kinda, it kind of all goes away. And let me say, the conclusion of the paper was not that, that, there is, that all these papers are wrong. We didn't conclude that, we just said, we think and there's an alternative explanation that needs to be considered. But we can't really prove that, we can't prove that they're, that they're wrong. We just say it's another, it's another possible. All right, so now uh, I want to show you a little bit more, just a little bit of math. Um, and it, it's, it's, it, we're, we're, headed, we're headed towards trying to solve this problem in terms of extracting back the, the real difference between methylation profiles when there is differences in cell composition. So this is an example from brain, where the problem isn't as big. So we had um, two, the, the, the outcome of interest here was not age, it was area of the brain. So we had, uh, shoot, there's, um, anybody here know about brains? There's uh, the HF and DLF, DLF. <laughs> okay, thank you. I used I I had I knew it when I was writing the paper and I forgot. So we have two 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 parts of the brain, and then we have yeah. So we have two parts of the brain, and when we compute um, the this is now a, a showing a profile of the um, of the the data right. So now we we have CPG measurements for for several points here. And we have, I'm not showing you the individual points, we just, we just show the, the smooth pattern, just, just to show you an example of what's going on. So basically what we're showing you is, if you look at the, the um, if you just look at the, at, the, at the data, at the data coming from these two parts, we find a, a difference, right, which is, this, this is part one, one of the parts of the brains, and this is the other, and it, it does look like there's a big difference there. There's a big difference in methylation. But when we look at the, if we, then somebody did a lot of work and got neurons and separated it from non-neurons. So here are the neurons, and here are the non-neurons, and now when you compare them, there's no differences in the neurons there's no differences between the two brain regions. Th those are the two lines here. And when you look at the other, and, and then, then when you look at the non-neurons, you don't see a difference either. But the neurons and the, it's not really glia, but, but you, I guess I'll start calling it that. When you look at neurons versus glia, there you see the difference. So it's again cell composition. Right, so th the difference you see here is not due to differences in DNA methylation, because if it were, we would, these two lines would be different, and these two lines would be different, at least, or at least one of them would be. But they both seem to be exactly the same. But we see a big difference, so why is that? Probably because one of these cell parts of the brain have more, has more neurons than the other. And it appears to be a difference. So we, we applied the same idea that, that we showed earlier, and when you estimate cell composition for the, of neurons for the two brain regions, we in fact find that there are differences. So you can see that this difference is very similar to this difference. So it's the same exact problem as I saw before, as we saw before. But now, so a little bit of math now. Uh, let's see if I can remember how we did this. Uh, so the, the, uh, what, 
what has been proposed, what, was ha what had been proposed before, was to take the profile, the, um, the cell composition estimates of the two uh, possible um, cell types and including them as covariates in, 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 a, in a regression model. But if you actually work out the math and you write out the model as yi, the observed methylation status, is equal to the profile. So basically what I'm doing, what I'm writing out here is a linear model that, that breaks it down into the two, prof the two possible profiles. xi is going to be 1 or 0, depending on you being uh, uh, case or control, or in this case, part of the brain 1 versus part of the brain 2. And then each one of these mu's are the four different profiles. We have neurons on tissue one, neurons on tissue two, glia on tissue one, glia on tissue two. And when you write it all down and, and you, you, you kind of do the, the, the algebra, you end up with a model that has the, 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 this part of the model is what people are are using have been a couple of groups have been using where they include the, the cell composition as a as one of the um, covariates, but the problem is that if that's and then the xi for the for the um, outcome of interest. So the the estimate would of interest would be sorry the parameter of interest would be beta two, but what we what we found is that if you do the math, you actually need a third term that includes the interaction of cell composite of these profiles, the, the um, cell composition estimates and the outcome of interest. How do you determine that you need that? Well, because we, just, we worked this out up here. We worked out, we worked out the math for, the, for what we're pretty sure is the right model, right? Where every, you're, you're basically saying each, the profile of a particular s sample is going to be equal to the a, combina a, uh, a, um, a combination of being cell type, uh, sorry, part of the brain one, and then the mixture, plus part of the brain two, plus that mixture. And if you, and if you work out the math, the, we, what we wanted to do is get it into a linear model as the one that we're being fit to correct. And the ones being fit to correct just included this, this, and this. But if, if, you, if you write that down, it's not equal to this. It's just algebra. You actually need these other parts. And then there's a, and you can calculate what the bias is going to be if you fit the wrong model. So anyway, so just to finish up, we, I'm going to show you how we, um, the, the three, the, what happens with the three models if you, um, if you don't account for anything you get, um, you know, you get this, oh yeah, sorry, one other thing. In, in this, when you, if you do this algebra, you actually get, when you write it like this, this beta 2 is the difference in methylation between the glia part, and this beta 3 is the difference in methylation between the neuron part. So those are the two things you actually want to, to know. So in he here, we're show I'm, I'm showing what happens when you estimate the difference between the two brain regions between, in, in locations that we know there's no differences because we have the original uh, cell-sorted samples. And you see this humongous bias because there's cell composition. And this is, these are the two estimates now, the two, the two separated out estimates that we get. And they're, you know, they're still a little bias, but they're much, much closer to the zero. It's the problem, the, the, one of the problems that we have is that we don't, the cell composition estimates aren't, have noise themselves. So that's something we haven't really figured out how to deal with yet. And then for the regions that we know change, we also get a better estimate of the actual, um, the actual, uh, the actu the actual uh, estimated coefficient. So this, this is the real, the truth, according to the cell sorted data. And this is the estimated parameter from our model. So this is a little bit more flat. It's a little biased compared to this one. All right, so that's it. That's all I have.
Yeah, imagine there's some questions. Yeah. Okay, so the, he, yes, so that you get the, in this model when you just have two cell two uh, I get so confused talking about this two cell types. Th this is the difference between beta two. We we reparametrized it so that beta two is the difference between the outcome of int between the two things you're comparing, which in this case is these two brain parts, for the neurons. And beta 3 is the difference for the glia. So, it, so here you have that. You have that difference separated out. But now the, the problem, the, 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 the question, the, a follow-up question could be, what, what if you don't have two? What if you have six? Then, it, then it's, it gets much harder. So in the cases where you have six, whatever, more than two, I think what, what ends up happening is, you, to, if you really want to do this again, I haven't worked it out just yet, but I think you're going you're to have too many parameters. Because you're going you're gonna to need like a bunch of interactions for it to work. So what I would recommend is you, you pick the one you care about, and you consider everything else the, another cell type. So you do what I care about and what I don't care about. And I think maybe this might work a little better. Yeah, so. Yeah, so let me just, I, I, can, I can quickly tell you what each one, this is actually a pretty simple thing to go through. If th these are the, the, the profiles, the mu's are the profiles, so this is the difference between the, um, this is the difference between neurons and glia for brain part one. That's like, that's like the bias part. This is the difference between part one and part two for the neurons. That you want to know. And this is the difference between the part one and part two for the glia. So that's why th these are the two things you care about, and this guy is just the bias. And then this is the profile. We just use it as a baseline here for the uh, neurons for brain part one. All right. Any other questions? We had the sort of cells for this occasion. Yes, yeah, SVA. Yeah, it's I don't know how they get published without referencing SVA, but it's just SVA. So there's all these papers. So when you, so I have something that that you, you not everybody's going to have. I have estimates of 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 these of the profiles um, for for pure neurons and pure glia. So but what if you're doing cancer? Right? This is going to happen in cancer, too, where it's a mixture of a bunch of stuff. You don't know what that stuff is. You don't know if it's what tissues you're getting mixed in there. So you don't, ha you don't, you don't have the profile, so what can you do? And there's these papers coming out saying, inventing a new method for doing this. And what they do is they just do, PC they do PCA and the same kind of stuff that we talked about this morning. But because it's, because it's methylation and it's it kind of, I guess it gets past the reviewers. That it has been done before, just for gene expression. But it's, it seems to, I don't know, maybe I didn't read the, get it, but it seemed to me to just be. That's what I was just curious. Are you guys agree that the lives are wrong? Because, I mean, one problem, of course, is that in like, cancer, for example, the lives are wrong. Like, the tissue admixture and your test of interest are often confounded, right? So if you have an ash for essentially doing the thing. Yeah. Yeah, you are, you are, so that's right. So I, I, I am optimistic that the, the batch effect correctors will account for cell composition if you pick the right number of PCs and it, all these other caveats. But, he, but what you're going to still have a problem with is the signal that you're estimating, right? that beta that you're estimating, that itself is a, is, a, is a convolution of a bunch of other real signals, right? That's, that's what uh, I think a lot of people haven't seen. Like they, when they write these things out, they don't actually tell you, what, what, wait a minute, what does, that, what does the X beta mean exactly? What is that beta exactly? Because it's not, it's not the difference. 
in, in any of the specific cells you have. It's kind of an overall thing. That, comp that decomposition, nobody's really talking about. Yeah. In this one, we are. We're, we're now moving on to using regions. Yes. Now, when, the, the, thing, the reason I'm comfortable with at least the first paper is that this, you know, that's pretty clear that the one CPG is enough. But yeah, so the, the neat thing we're doing now that, um, that I think is going to work really well is if we use regions, I think we can use um, pl one platform profiles in any other platform. That's coming soon, hopefully. Because it's because because when you have because these num when you do the when you do the, the the reverse engineering the inverse problem thing where you extract um, you extract these proportions from this matrix that's very specific to having the right matrix that includes all the probe effects so we're 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 working on something that that gets around that hopefully. So if you if I okay so if you if you remove one of these I still think all these numbers will will stay about the same and it all it'll go into into the error term So so if you ha what what will happen is if if the batch is being if the unvarnered variation is being driven in big part by the one you remove then you won't notice it But the, these co if I, these things still get estimated okay But if you if you remove granulocytes then we, we might have missed this, right? It, it wouldn't, because look at this picture, right? Here's the estimates of, for every sample, I'm giving you in color the estimated composition. And you can see for the not so young, it's, all, it's, it's almost all granulocytes. And then the other ones are kind of more spread out. So if you take this one out, then they kind of look similar. And it could make it even worse. Can't make it better, but it can make it even worse. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Right. Oh, that was an optimistic note. <laughs> 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 <laughs>